Hey guys, welcome back to Chris's Toy Box. This is our third episode. And today we'll be looking at the DC Universe Classics Spectre figure, part of DC Comics' 75 years of superpower figures. And now before we open this, let's take a look at the package. You see here it's got the uh, DC Universe logo here at the top, and it has their DC Comics' 75 years of superpower logo at the bottom with the Spectre's name. Also includes a collector's button. I guess that's cool. Uh, on the back of the box, we have a little biography for uh, the Spectre himself and his statistics and the other figures in the line that you can buy and collect the other pieces to do sort of like Marvel Legends build a figure and build Dark Side. Was it Dark Seed? I think it's Dark Side. We're going to go with Dark Side. Uh, in this line, you also get Eclipso. Here we have the Spectre, Copperhead, Iron, Mary Batson, Dasad, and Dr. Midnight. So, now that we've looked at all this, I don't think I need to tell you guys who the Spectre is. If you're a comic book fan, you know who this guy is. Already, so we're just going to open this guy up. Alright, so, out of the package, we get this nice looking Spectre figure. You know, Mr. Corrigan looks pretty cool on this pose that I put him in for the review. He, um, as far as articulation goes, he's got the ab crunch like you know, most of these DC Universe Classics figures. Uh, he's got the shoulder articulation. Um, the, one of the things I want to point out, I was originally never ever going to pick up any of these DC figures because of the area right here between the thigh and the crotch area. There's this big giant gaping hole, you know, L shape, and that just kind of ruined the illusion for me. It's pretty much why I prefer the ball joints and the Marvel Legends figures. But, you know. Seeing this out of the box, you know, this isn't a very this isn't a very bad figure. I'm, I'm actually okay with the way this thing looks. Now, as far as the articulation of the figure itself goes, uh, his shoulders do rotate up and down, you know, in and out. Kinda, they're pretty hard to move. Uh, his bicep rotates, his wrists rotate, it's kind of stiff at first. His head turns halfway because the collar of the cape sort of keeps it from going all the way around. Uh, he's got the ab crunch, you can't go too far down because of the, you know, ab area or the waist area, but you can go back. And he's got the, you know, standard leg pivot. You can rotate his uh, lower part of his thigh all the way around if you need to. You can bend him at the knee and you can bend him, you can bend his ankles up and down. Uh, you can't, however, rotate his ankles. So no chance of you getting his feet out to the side like that, unless you rotate the uh, bottom part of the thigh. Uh, his cape is made of this soft, rubbery, plastic, I'm guessing rubbery material. It could just be rubber. Uh, it's actually pretty nice. The only problem is that it's sort of kind of heavy. So when you try standing him up, sometimes he leans to the front too much or he leans to the back too much. So you have to play around with the uh, Oh, this is going to stand right. Taking a closer look, you'll see that his face sculpt is really nice. He's got that nice cleft chin. Uh, his eyes are you know, brighter white than the rest of them. Uh, I think that it's more of a sort of an off-white, kind of really, really, really cool gray color. So it stands out a lot. The uh, cape uh, is basically just the darker green color. There's no black wash or anything on it, so it's just all the shading and details you're going to get come from the lighting against the uh, creases and folds in the cape itself. The um, detail on the muscles is the same as the other DC Universe figures. Uh, it's, it's basic, but it, it actually works for what they're doing here. The uh, joints in the uh, elbows are exposed, but they're the same color as the rest of his costume, so it's not too bad. The uh, same thing goes for the joints in the front uh, the of the knees. Same color, but it, it doesn't ruin the effect of anything. Like I said earlier, this is the only part that bothers me is this you know, L-shaped gap between the thigh here. Uh, but other than that, it's a pretty solid figure. Now as I said earlier, it does come with uh, pieces for you to build your own figure, in this case Darkseid, and uh, you get the right arm and hand of Darkseid. It actually has a removable hand that just pops off there. And there's a ball joint right there, and you can just pop on dark side regular, you know, hand. And that's basically what you get. 
like I said before, I'm probably not going to find any more of these figures in town to complete my dark side, so these little extra pieces here might end up just getting thrown in my toy box, or I'll just end up giving it to a friend who may be missing a piece. The Spectre also comes with this cool collector's button, which I really have no use for. I might just stick this on the, the letter bags that I carry, carry with me when I go to the conventions here in town, and it might fall off and get lost and... You know, it's a button. It, it's... What else can I say about it? That's all it is. It's got a nice little image here of the uh, original Spectre and the original Green Lantern as uh, well as the original Flash over here. It's kind of fuzzy, but uh, that's basically it. And I think uh, that's all that's really on there. On the back it has the uh, DC Comics of 75 years logo. Uh, but yeah, it's a, it's a button. All right, it's size comparison time. The Spectre is about six and three quarters, maybe seven inches tall. So just like the other DC Universe Classics figures, he stands about the same size as the Matty Collector, you know, Masters of the Universe Classic Skeletor figure. So, you know, you can actually mix and match these different series together, just kind of like the, uh, you know, DC versus Masters of the Universe 2 packs that Toys R Us used to have. They're kind of hard to find over here in Texas now. Uh, he's actually quite bigger than Athena Ostomia from the King of Fighters game, which, you know, that's to be expected. This is like a, um, I don't even remember, a friend of mine gave this thing. I think this is a promo for, you know, some other, like, King of Fighters game that came out a few years ago. Uh, but yeah, other than that, there, it's a really nice figure. I mean, if you're a fan of DC Comics and all the characters in that universe and you love, if you're like me and you love characters with, like, capes and hoods and, like, that really soft, rubbery, flexible plastic material, then yeah, definitely, you want to buy this. This figure, you don't want to pass it up, especially since this, you know, line is supposedly canceled. These are actually on clearance in a lot of stores right now. This one, it's, uh, this Spectre figure here, I actually got from Kroger for about 10 bucks, so that's like five or six dollars cheaper than, you know, Walmart or Target, uh, and it might be a little, like, maybe seven or eight dollars cheaper than Toys R Us, at least out here. But you definitely need to have this in your collection if you have other DC Universe Classics for you. Alright, thank you guys for checking out my review of the DC Universe Classic Spectre figure. Be sure to come back next time when we will be looking at the Black Lantern Hal Jordan figure from the same line. Thank you and see you guys next time.